In this episode, we're going to take a look at a very interesting situation that exists in many environments revolving around what's called the Web Proxy Auto Discovery Protocol, or WPAD. Now, please note that it's the Web Proxy Auto Discovery, not Windows Proxy Auto Discovery. I sometimes hear it misnamed, and naming it in that way may make you believe that it only applies to Windows systems, but it actually can apply to any system that supports Proxy Auto Discovery which is almost all web browsers. How does it get exploited and what's the impact on you? Well, I'm going to walk through a demonstration of how an attacker would set this up, where that attacker could either be internal on your network, or perhaps has remotely compromised the system, or even is sitting in a Starbucks, airport, library, or anywhere else with an open wireless network. If you're in that kind of situation, this is the kind of thing that an attacker can do and probably go undetected by almost all people, yet be able to gather up tremendous amounts of information. Here's how we do it. First of all, the system that I'm connected to right now, which happens to be a Backtrack 5 system, though that is unimportant, the kind of system, it doesn't matter, you can actually accomplish this attack with any kind of system, including Windows. But this one happens to be running Backtrack because it has a few extra tools installed that I'm going to find useful to do this attack. The very first thing I need to do is change its host name from Ubuntu to WPAT because that NetBIOS name turns out to be very important for proxy auto discovery. Let me show you how that works, particularly in a Windows environment. First, I'm going to have to turn on the SMBD and NMBD services. These are Samba services used to do NetBIOS broadcasts and name resolution. So in order to accomplish this in a Windows environment, which is uh, pretty ubiquitous, these two services are used to now begin advertising that my machine is named WPAT. With that taken care of, I only need to do one or two other quick things. The first one is that I need to create a file here in the web directory, and on this system I am running a web server. You can see it's already up and running. I need to create a file here called wpad.dat. Now this file, that name is very particular and the content is also rather important. This file allows you to define JavaScript, but very, very little of it. The one particular thing you can define is this function called find proxy for URL. And this piece of JavaScript will automatically be loaded and executed by any system that tries to do proxy auto discovery. This function takes two arguments. The first is the URL you're trying to connect to, and the second is the host where that URL exists. Now, I'm not actually going to make use of either one of those arguments, but I have to accept them both. The only thing I really need to do in here is return a proxy value, and that takes this format, proxy, followed by an IP address. Now, the machine that I'm on happens to be at 10.0.1.73, and then I have to give it a port number to listen on, and I'm going to give it port 1080. Now, right now, there's nothing listening on port 1080, but that's not a problem. I'm going to start up on this system a listener on that port. So here under Vulnerability Assessment, Web Application Vulnerability Assessment, and Web Application Proxies, I find that there is a tool called Burp Suite. So let me get that started. I can ignore any of the errors that it might pop up. This acts or will allow me to have a proxy automatically configured on my system that's typically used for doing penetration testing or even exploitation attacks against web applications. The way it works is you're able to configure a proxy that's going to listen on your machine. And I actually already have one that I've set up here on port 1080 as you can see, and it's also marked, notice, loopback only is turned off. That means that my machine, if I were to look right now, is listening, well, let me do it with name resolution turned off. My system is listening right now on port 1080. Now I've actually done everything I need to to get this running. I'm just going to make one other change because by default, when you turn on Burp Suite, it turns on Intercept by default. In other words, it will actually stop communication and allow you to modify it, 
which we don't need to do in this demonstration. I just need to demonstrate that we can capture the communication. So let me switch to the history option and you'll see that it's currently empty. And next I'm going to bring up a Windows host that I happen to have handy and start up Internet Explorer. Now Internet Explorer here, if I take a look under the configuration, is set up under Connections, LAN Settings, to automatically detect settings. You'll find that this setting is very common to find in Opera, uh, um, Firefox, and Internet Explorer, and even other browsers. You may find it's disabled on some systems in your domain, but others will also have it enabled. Well, what's the effect? If I click OK through all of these and then go to a website like, how about Google, my computer goes there with no big surprise. There's no nothing unusual that's happened so far. Things look okay. Let me try to go to another site. Now, keep in mind that on my system here, I happen to be going in through a Windows 2003 domain controller, which has the, or I'm sorry, not a domain controller, just a Windows 2003 server. And that has the high security configuration currently configured for my web browser. So I'm going to have to add in something here to let it go to eBay, but normally that would not be intercepted. Well, what's my point? I can go to eBay, I can go to Google, who cares? Well, if I switch back to Burp Intruder, notice that I now have a record of all of those connections. I can see the request that went into Google, here I can see the request that went into eBay, and I can also see all of the responses that come back from the server. So not just the request that the user sends in, but how the system responds as well. Of course, you can see the impact of this. This means that I can surreptitiously begin to intercept all of the web traffic that's passing by. Now you may say to yourself, what would happen if we were looking at an HTTPS site? Would I get a warning? And the answer is, you would. Now I'm going to uh, turn off that warning there. Here is the warning you will get. It says here, revocation information for the certificate is not available. Do you want to proceed? So the user has just received some kind of an SSL warning. Now my question to you is, what will most users do in this situation? Well, of course, most will click, simply click yes. If we view the certificate, I can see that while it's saying it's from eBay.com, it's been issued by portswigger.ca, uh, a sort pay, sort Portswigger CA, or Certificate Authority, which is the name of the, of the site that deploys Burp Intruder. If I just click OK, though, and click Yes, now I do get a warning. It says there's something not right, but if I proceed, well, it will work just fine. Now, in this particular case, I ran into a problem with my Burp configuration, so I would need to do some additional testing. But as you can see, the ability to, or the likelihood of a user simply telling it, yes, it's okay, go ahead and request that HTTPS site, is actually quite likely. And with just a little bit of tinkering, I can make this work for any website a user might go to, reading their mail, no matter what it is. Now, what's the mitigation for this? As an auditor or a security person, you would want to ask some questions about your organization, particularly in a Windows domain, which is more vulnerable than, to this than most other sites. Remember that the cause of the problem was that I'm now advertising myself as WPAT. In fact, if I come in here and do an NMB lookup for WPAT, it comes back and tells me, well, on the local network, that's 10.0.1.73. The mitigation for this is twofold. The first one is add a DNS entry into your DNS server that will resolve WPAD. You could also, of course, do this within your Win server. Simply create the machine name and maybe assign it to 127.0.0.1. Now within your organization, this attack will no longer be successful, even with the auto discovery enabled because your Windows system will prefer to do the lookup through the WINS service. What if you're in Starbucks? Of course, those settings won't matter. So within an, a public network, what you would likely want to do is add a setting into your hosts file within the Windows System32 drivers Etsy directory, add in an entry for WPAD pointing at 127.0.0.1. 
That will prevent this kind of attack from being used against you should your proxy auto discovery be enabled. Of course, another solution would be to simply disable the proxy auto discovery protocol within your browser. And that's what I would prefer to do. But since we don't know if a user will install some other browser like Firefox or Opera, it's probably best to add that host entry into the local system for laptops and other systems that may be exposed in public areas. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and we look forward to talking to you again next month.